see the all the wars and all the troubles between Israel and the surrounding nations. Not only that, it has spilled all over here between those people on that side and these people on that side. Is still the consequence, even though it, what they thought is just, you know, have a child to replace because I need a child. And because I need a child, why don't you go into Hagar? They didn't know what they were doing. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They know not what they do. And when they said, crucify him. Let his blood be upon us. Let what will be be. We don't care. Did they know that they will be scattered all over the world? Did they know that they are going to suffer all the thousands of years? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Many times, the things you do, they look small. They look very simple. And they look ordinary. But you don't know the consequence. Father, forgive them. What a great intercession. And I pray that your forgiveness will be real in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Simon, Simon, the Lord said, Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. The Lord was looking at the future, and Simon was looking at the present. I don't need all that prayer. I don't need all that intercession. I can hold out, I can stand, I'm okay, I can make it. The body can confront me, but the Lord knew the future. And he knew what was going to happen to him a few days to that time. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. Why was Satan desire to have me? Because Satan is looking ahead to the day of Pentecost, where you will preach. And 3,000 people will get converted. And Satan says, this man having a gift like this and this authority like this, I want to have him. Why will Satan desire to have me, Simon? Because he's looking at chapter 3 of Acts. When you will say, silver and gold are buying on. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. He wants to get you away from that. He looks at the future. And he says, if I leave this man alone, if I leave this woman alone, 3,000 in chapter 2 will come to Christ. And then that lame man in chapter 3 will rise up. If I leave this man alone in chapter 5, a shadow will be healing the seed. I don't want that to happen. Satan has desired to have you. And the Lord knew the future. And he said, I'm not going to allow this one to fall. I'm not going to allow this one to give up because Jesus too was looking at the future. He is weak today, he is going to be strong tomorrow. If you are weak today, you will be strong tomorrow in Jesus' name. He appears not to understand himself. A boisterous man, a self-confident man, and yet a man who led to himself will be a failure. But the Lord looked at the future. He said, Peter, Simon, Simon, I cannot allow you to go your way. I cannot allow you to just be yourself. And I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail. That's the intercession the Lord is praying for us. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He'll be a source of strength to the body of Christ. You will be a source of strength to the body of Christ. Did I hear your amen? We're looking at John chapter 7. John chapter 7 is praying for us. John chapter 7, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. What a prayer. What a prayer. There was something in each of those disciples, their own propensity to evil. Sanctify them, Lord. There was something in them, the Adamic nature, the carnality. Sanctify them, Lord. You know the difference between worldliness and carnality? You know there are many people, they say, praise the Lord, I'm free from worldliness. I'm praising the Lord for you too and with you, that you are free from worldliness. But there's another thing, apart from worldliness, it's called carnality. And it's not enough to be free from worldliness. That's good, they're not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. 
I have chosen them out of the world, free from worldliness, but not free from carnality. The envy, the jealousy, the competition, and the self-promotion, and the self-confidence, and the selfishness, self-centeredness, the carnality within, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. The Lord is praying for you now. I said the Lord is praying for you now. And the prayer is praying is that the Almighty God will sanctify you, sanctify us, sanctify His church. God will answer that prayer. Verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. That's the prayer that Jesus Christ prayed. That's the prayer he continues to pray now on the right hand of majesty on high. As thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world should may believe that thou hast sent me. He will answer. I said he will answer. Chapter 14, John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. He says, and I will pray the Father. He said, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to heaven. And I'm going to pray to the Father when I get there to heaven. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. You ask me, how did those disciples receive the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? They prayed. Yes, I know they prayed. They waited on the Lord. Yes, I know they waited on the Lord. They tarried in Jerusalem. Yes, I know they tarried in Jerusalem. All the tarrying, all the waiting, all the praying, all the self-examination, all the passion, all the desire. Give us the Holy Ghost. We'll do nothing. Why it not for the fact that Jesus Christ was making intercession for them. And all your tarrying, all your praying, all your eagerness, all your desire, all your passion, all your pursuit, all your go-getting, be a go-getter. All that will amount to nothing except that Jesus is praying for you. If you have not received the Holy Ghost yet, during this retreat, you are going to have the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus is praying for you. Look at verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you. How long? forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you is praying that you will have the power of the holy ghost you are going to have that power in jesus name Look at chapter 24 of Luke. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But are ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured from, with power from on high. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 22 Acts chapter 2 from verse 22 ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you I see yourselves know he being delivered by the determinate counsel of God and for knowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. But now it says, Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be holding of it. He rose from the dead, then he went to heaven. When he went to heaven, what did he do? Look at verse 33. 
Therefore, be by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He prayed to the Father, the Father answered, and the Father gave him the right to send the Holy Ghost upon the believers. It says, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared for us this, which he now see and uh, hear. So then we understand that Jesus Christ is praying for us. Not only that, the Holy Ghost is also standing by his side, praying for us as well. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 26 and verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Christ praying for us. The Holy Ghost praying for us. Christ and the Holy Ghost joining together, making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Notice that he maketh intercession, not that he made in the past or he will make in the future. Right now, he's making intercession for us, the saints of God, according to the will of God. And you know, there's something that makes people that uh, makes people get confused when they are praying. They want to pray now they know that if it's the will of god god will do it but how do i know the will of god this is how you know the will of god anything god has promised is the will of god god will never promise anything that is not his will look at the word of god see his promises those promises express his will number two his provision anything he has provided he never provides anything which is not his will. How do you give somebody something and say, this is not my will. I don't want you to have this, but, you know, I provide it for you. No. His provision is his will. Number three, his precepts. When he commands anything, that's his will. That's his will. If God commands anything, that's a precept. That is his will. Number four, his prophecies all the predictions and the prophecies that's the will of god when he says this will happen that's will happen that's his will that's his will and when you pray according to the promises you're praying according to his will when you pray according to his provision that's his will when you pray according to his precepts that's his will when you pray according to his prophecies and predictions that's his will his praise, whatever will bring glory to him, whatever will bring praise unto him, that's his will. Lord, I'm asking for this because this will honor your name. This will praise you. This will glorify you. All those things according to his praise, that's his will. His past prayers, the prayers that Jesus preached in the past, that's his will. Any prayer he preached in the past for anybody, that's his will. And then our profit. Anything that will profit us. Anything that will benefit us. He daily loads us with benefits. Our profit is his will. Now we come to our own prayer. We've seen the prayer of Jesus. We've seen the intercession of Jesus. Now our guided intercession from the throne. First of all, remember... When we pray, we're not praying like, you know, we're not praying like Daniel. You know how Daniel prayed. And I've heard some believers, they, they say, you know what? If we're going to pray and receive an answer, we have to really switch. And we have to really take hold of the principalities and powers. And I'm saying, why? Oh, they said, do you remember Daniel? Yes, I 
do. Do you remember how he prayed? Yes, I do. And do you remember that for 21 days, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And then the angel eventually came and he said 21 days ago, when you started the prayer, the Lord sent me. But then the prince of Pasha hindered me that I couldn't break through. Now I have come to reveal the mind of God unto you. They say when they pray, they think of Daniel. I don't think of Daniel. You know why? Daniel on earth completely. And then God in heaven completely. In between Daniel on earth and God in heaven, there were the principalities and the powers. The prince of the power of the air. And then the prince of Persia. And when the angel was coming, then the prince kind of delayed the answer, the angel. And he fought it through for 21 days before he could come. But now, where are we? Look at now. I read it to you before I read it again. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And he has raised us up together. He has. This past tense already. This has happened already. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See what the Lord has done. The Lord has transformed, has transferred us, literally translated us spiritually from where Daniel was, and we have crossed over and then was seated with Christ on the throne. And when we're praying, we're not praying like Daniel prayed, and we're waiting for so many days and weeks and months and years. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father.